email I want to forward to you guys. Um, did I tell you guys we got the grant for from NRCS for for Tweed River Drive and so we actually they sent some some initial paperwork for that um, and I'm just gonna pull it up. I'll forward those to you afterwards. That'll, that's a more correspondence. The actual application came in. So. All right. I make a motion to call the meeting to order. Okay. The meeting's call to order at 6.02. All right. So um, we have some public presents. Uh, public present, welcome. Um, we also have some media present. We have uh, Onion River Community Access, who's filming, and um, another gentleman just walked in. I'm expecting some people to come about the parking thing. I know the Jarekis were coming. Um, I haven't heard from them that they canceled or are not coming. Joyce, are you here for the parking petition or any of them in particular or no? Um, just coming to Okay, I just, I just yeah. wanted to, if you were here for something, I wanted to hear it. And, okay, so, <laughs> all right. So, the first is um, highway and bridge restrictions for, um, from VTrans. We received this. Um, I think this just has to be forwarded to George because I'm not. Um, it talks about the different highway bridges in town and what their restrictions are and weight restrictions. I think this should get forwarded to George. If you want to see that, Tina, you can. <coughs> um, second was just a correction for the. Um, equalization study results um, and that was dealt with by the treasurer and the listers I believe so this is just an FYI that they did a the CLA there was a corrected number that came out so that. we have um, the VLCT news if anybody wants that okay um, we have some other correspondence. <coughs> um, we have first is ARC, the ARC newsletter. Um, we have the November and December financials from the town court. There you go. wants us to go through these if we have any specific questions just to reach out to her and talk to her. And this is left by the town clerk.
Alright, um... The Jerepis here. So I'll, I'll hold off on that for now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. I just wanted to check with you. I yeah, I do have one here. set of minutes for approval, which is the. Uh, sorry about that. That's okay. Just figure out what Yeah. January 16th, so that was one of the. Um, one of the amend one of the was a special meeting. this was um, one of the amendments to the um, agenda was it was January 16th not the 7th that we had to do approval of minutes and this was the budget meeting that we had the other day um, so I make the motion to approve anyone seconding that I missed uh, uh, the minutes yeah, the minutes. Just for the budget. Yeah. Just for the budget meeting we did the other day. So, um, I have some other correspondence to go through real quickly. So we're going to go to um, correspondence number seven, which would be the census, which isn't on there. What was um, six? Six was the one we just read. The town okay. clerk letter. The town clerk letter. Um, so, um, um, just put in the pile. I think. seven is, is a census. <laughs> this came in, this is about boundaries. I think it probably should get forwarded to George or maybe the Lister's office. It's about town boundaries. Um, and it's verification of the boundaries. And it's gotta be returned by, and this is just for the Census Bureau, and they would like it back by March 1st. So we have to decide who we're gonna send that to. I think maybe, um, We would have better records than George, I think, for boundaries. Okay, they so I'll just forward us. it to the listers then. Okay, so this will get forwarded to the listers. Do we know what, are you going to let us know what six was? Um, or what was in the letter? Isn't it public record once it's out? Yeah, so I, I gave it to town council to read for a minute because I, I just got it and I, I want to make sure how to proceed with that. I'm not 100%. Um, that's for the, if you want to make a note of that. So maybe we will. So, yeah. I would suggest that this be tabled to um, discuss at the next meeting after there's been further investigation because I can't really tell from this letter what what exactly happened. I really can't. I'm right. a little confused. Um, and I don't feel that it's. Um, I think it's uh, having just. Have it, having just have, had it handed to me at this right. moment, I feel um, like I would need more information to yeah. comment on whether we should go forward on discussion on it tonight. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if any, what anyone else thinks, but I would ask that it be tabled until the next week. Okay. I'm, I'm Matt. I mean, I don't even know what to do. 
Yeah, I, I'm kind of, uh, it sort of, all right, so essentially it's, it is, it's a, it's an additional complaint from the town clerk. Um, and that's really all I'm going to get into right now until, until I've had a chance to read it. And I just read it right now for the first time, so. Um, well, I think the question is, why would you submit it to the, on the, and put it on the agenda? She, it was left for correspondence for me when I, when I came here. So, I mean, um, you know, I, I entered it as correspondence. So, which it is. I mean, it is correspondence. It was left. Um, you know, it's, it's, you know, all right. So I think we'll table this until, until uh, the next meeting. Um, and we will go forward from there. under the advice of counsel. And I, I just wondering, is it a same complaint about Anne, or this is a new complaint about somebody else? It's a new complaint, and it's... About somebody else. It, it's, I think it's rolled into the same thing, but it's not. It's, I think under the advice of counsel, as I just read it and handed it to her, I'm going to hold off commenting on it. Um, and I think, you know, it's, um, it's unfortunate, um, but like I said, council is, it's not something that was planned on being addressed here, you know, it's something that has to be addressed, obviously. Um, and, and, the, and we're going to take, we're going to make a motion towards that earlier complaint tonight. You know, I got some advice from council. I got some advice from, from VLCT as to make a motion. And I have a, on that letter, are you going to talk to all the names in that letter or is it just what um, the town clerk has to say? No. I, I think we'll, it's going to have to be another complaint, another investigation, another separate incident, I think. It's, yeah. Yes. Yeah. It doesn't seem Including like... Including talking to everybody involved in the letter. Right. So We just weren't prepared for it tonight. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't prepared for it. Um, and I, and I, I'm going to... I'm not trying to be evasive in any way. I'm trying to just... my. The town council advised that we table it until we have a clear idea of what's going on. And by reading that letter, I don't have a huge clear idea of what happened. Yeah. So, yeah, I could, you know, I think we could also just say that it is something that just happened this afternoon. So, um, we don't really have all the facts, all the information, and I can't even tell from reading this what what happened. So, I don't think it's appropriate. But all the participants that she's claiming and there will be discussed before we will and so you hear all sides of stories and not just one side we're not looking to hear one side of anything her okay I'm not looking to hear one side of anything yes we will it will be handled it'll be handled the way the proper it's procedures and the public will be made aware of it once um, we decide on how to go forward with proceeding on it it's not a conflict of interest complaint. It's not, it's, you know, another complaint alleging, um, you know, harassment in the workplace, basically. <laughs> I think that comments that are not respectful or um, are inappropriate here, so I would keep your comments to yourself, please. Okay, as long as it goes through the proper channels that have been set up, that you actually wrote Mary Lou. Well, we're gonna we're gonna talk <coughs> about that, and and Mary Lou just said it doesn't fall under a conflict of interest. It's it's a it's a it's a it's a workplace issue and a harassment issue, which is not a conflict of interest. So, 
I think we should table it and, and move forward when we're able to move forward on it. Um, I think, we've, like you said, we got to talk to the people involved and find out what happened and go from there. Um, so, with that, moving on to old business. Um, I'm going to hold off on the Jarecki thing because I, I know that Trisha Jarecki said she was going to come to the meeting about, about the petition. Okay. About the petition. So, um, with that said, we'll just go on to the CB South letter. Um, old business for CB South. Actually, oh, she just got here. How are you doing, Mrs. Jarecki? <laughs> Okay, so I was just saying since you weren't here, we were going to hold off because you were the oh. first thing in, in old business. But oh. since you're here, we'll, we'll go to. So, um, so we're, going back to one. we're going back to old business one, which is the uh, Jarecki and the residents of Pittsfield um, about the parking. So we got, your, we got your petition for the parking change. Um, I left you a message on the phone. Did you get it? Um, saying that I was reaching out to VLCT and a, and a couple other people to find out. So the two things I did find out, first, there is no, there's nothing in the grant about the hours. We're, we're not, it's not respective on the grant. VLCT did advise us, so the Municipal Assistance Center, that uh, uh, Petition regarding roads and regulations um, is considered public safety petition. It's a advisory petition. Um, it's not something that can be addressed in town meeting um, because people could advise. They could advise their their town meeting or their select boards or whatever the governing bodies are that we want to change the speed limit in town to 55 on whatever road we want and things like that, which it it's not. Um, permissible under Vermont statute. However, what what is permissible is this is an advisory petition. We have two routes we can go. We can bring it up at the town meeting as a non-binding vote from the town meeting members, see what they vote, like when you did the um, when you did the vote to change the time and you had the 88 people that said they wanted the meeting time change bring it up as a non-binding vote, the next select board meeting, then we, we visit it then and we change the meeting. Um, so as an advisory petition, we can bring it up as a non-binding vote at the end of the meeting. We can do a vote and see what people say, what they feel. Um, and then the citizens who filed the petition, someone has to come forward and, uh, and formally ask the select board to revisit the the ordinance. Select board has the ability to change the ordinance. We put the ordinance in two and a half years ago. Um, it can be changed, but we have to be advised by someone in this petition. They would like it to be revisited and opened and talked didn't, about at a meeting. Didn't that happen with the letter and the petition already? No. Okay. The petition was to put it on on the on the warning to okay. warn it as a as a as a town meeting thing for the vote, which we could have, you know, we were looking at doing, but unfortunately that vote can't be had at town meeting. The, you, these people, you know, we can do, like I said, we can do a non-binding vote at the end and see, you know, what people feel at the meeting, but you have the signatures here that are required. You know, someone's gonna have to come to the select board meeting and ask us to change it. Then we'll have to have George in and talk about why the ordinance was made in the first place and sort of deliberate back and forth as to what we feel is appropriate. Okay, George. So, does, if you're saying it just needs to come to be brought to your attention um, and have it brought up at the next select board meeting, why do we need to go through the town? Why could I was saying there were different options. You could do it as a non binding vote or you could just bring it to the select board but and ask for the change for next board meeting, put it on and ask for that to happen next, at yep. the next meeting. We can Just ask, to be considered. we can be considered, can be considered right. right, for you guys to discuss. It can be considered and we'll have to get George to the meeting and right. get his input do, as well. Do you think just changing the parking ride 
to the new park by the bridge so people can park overnight there. It's more of it was a plowing so, issue so and the, the fact that people were parking so the, from the tenant's the, house. Actually, we are constrained as to what we can do with the open space. So open space, there can be no overnight parking at the open space. Um, we and FEMA and VRCB are all owners of the open space. Um, FEMA has regulations that say there can be no overnight parking at that open space parking. Um, I really think that I spoke to George about it and um, most of it was the plowing issue and that people were from the tenant's house parking there and keeping their car there. So if the person that has the house with the rentals could say they couldn't park there and then just during snow hours you can't park from you know, this hour to this hour, if it's snowing out. Um, I think we tried that with the owner of the house at that point. <laughs> That's how it used to be, actually, we, before we, there was the word. But, but we kind of discussed it, I don't know, it was last week or something, about maybe having like a set few parking spots for that overnight. That would be overnight. We weren't. That's, like, rather than these ones out here where George really kind of needs to plow those along the town hall, like maybe something off to the... The front of the building, like, over like three the spots, like, yeah. Like, this corner. like the worst. Can I just ask a question? Is that the whole reason of the no overnight for plowing issues? Yes. So April there was no plowing issue. So why do we have to have it year round? Why can't it be snow snow alerts or whatever? The ordinance was totally the ordinance was that. was written before I became a select board member. Okay. It carried over into the year that I was a select that my first year as a select board member got voted in. George presented to the select board what the actual issues were. There were plowing issues and there were overnight parking issues okay. with the right. apartment. Okay. I don't and recall tenants, what all the those were. even in the summertime with right. rather. I don't recall what all those were. Than, than but um, what I'm saying yeah, is we can revisit it at the select board meeting. If you guys don't want to do the town meeting part and you just want to bring it to the select board, we can I'll put it on the agenda I for the just next meeting. Like it probably doesn't need to even waste time at town meeting because right. right. I'm sure yeah. it's going to be long enough that... No, no, no. I'm, I'm just saying to. we can do that. I have, I was, yeah, whichever way is quickest and easiest. You have. You I know, have but all I wanted there, to do so. was let you know what the options were as they were spelled out by VLCT to me. You can bring it to town meeting for a non-binding vote. You can bring it directly to the select board, whichever you prefer to do. So can we bring it to the select board right, right now, now to ask for that for next year? Yep, I will okay. put it on the agenda for the next meeting. That is such okay. a beautiful thing. Thank yep. you, Charles. Okay. Yes. So that is tabled to the next meeting. Okay. So the next meeting, you're saying someone on that letter has to be there. Someone you just did it. You just did it. You already oh, did it. You asked, okay. so you asked it to be on there. Okay. So I will okay. ask George to come and explain okay. what the reasonings were behind everything. and. And you guys are more than welcome to be present, and we will hash it out. We'll figure it out. Whether it's a couple spots or whatever we end up doing, we'll, we'll, do, we'll figure it out. Okay. So, so. Will you, are you going to invite George? Yeah, okay. I'm going to invite George to come to that meeting as well. Okay, so the next um, is CV South. The only reason I put this under old business is, um, and you weren't at the last meeting, you weren't at the last select board meeting, but you were at the budget meeting and we did. Um, so CB South has another, they have an um, amendment going. I didn't know if we wanted to do a letter supporting them as well, like we did for Colton or not, just saying, you know, that we support the town business or not. It's really... I think it's an amendment to a ruling that was already made, so I don't think there's a huge, huge reason for us to write a letter, but we could if we wanted to, to support CB as well. So, and this is just about, um, they're wanting to amend, it doesn't say what they're amending on it. To amend the decision that was made um, regarding their permitting. So, who CB South? CB wants South to wants to do an amendment. Yes. Who is CB South? Oh. That's um. 
It's an expansion of the. It's the CV across the street project. part of CV oh, okay. oil. It's, it's the part that that is over by the snowmobile trails. Gotcha. So, okay. Um, you know, I'd be willing to talk to Greg or if anybody knows what's going on with this, maybe we can find out what they're what they're looking to amend and and go from there. So we can put that with this. Do we have a file on this Act 250? Their application? And yeah, it's have, upstairs somewhere inside okay. that, yeah. Um, I know I know. Um, the last Act 250 notification I got was about Colton. It's the, the um, Yeah, no, but I'm in NCB, so. Yeah, there's a file on them both. Okay. So. Moving on from that, we're going to go on to the buyout discussion with um, Mary Lou with an update on the buyout. Okay, well, everything is on track for a closing on the 30th. Mm -hmm. to, to, um, this would be for the town to purchase the property owned by Mary and Abrams. Um, that will be held here at the town offices. And I believe that's 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And for those of you who don't, don't know, um, <coughs> the Abrams is applied for FEMA money. <coughs> Excuse me. They applied for and were granted um, under under um, HUD and FEMA, um, a buyout dated, that was post dated back to Irene um, for their property. So the town will be acquiring that property and then having to do the same thing that it did to the other houses that were, that were acquired during the FEMA flood, where there'll be demolition of, demolition of existing properties or structures on that property. It will be demolished, cleaned, and, and then um, the town will take ownership of that open space as well. So, okay. So, do we have to actually discuss the demolition plans, or is that are we um, so the, off on we're, that? So, the part that we're going to talk about with the demolition plans is um, the only thing I wanted to make a note of was that in the in the budget, there's going to be a a discrepancy between the money that is coming back for the buyout. Um, we're getting, we initially put out $260,000 for the buyout. Um, $178,000 of that is going to come to the town on the buyout date that Mary Lou was discussing, the 31st. There, the rest of it, the 30th. Right? The 30th. Okay. 30th. The rest of it um, is going to be reimbursed to the town, but it doesn't get reimbursed at the time of, of the purchase of the property. It gets reimbursed once a demolition happens on the property. So the town is putting up. Um, so we pay out first and then we get reimbursed. We get reimbursed. So proxy, what we have to do is we have to put out to bid, have the contractor come in and give us whatever the different bids are, and we've allocated up to. The last property that the town demolished was on a was on Park Place, Park Place and that was um, just under fifty thousand dollars. That was one structure um, on the Abrams property. There's two structures, so in the budget we allowed for up to seventy thousand dollars in that. So there'll be a discrepancy, but depending on how much it is, we'll get that money back when when the demolition actually happens. So I just wanted to make a note of that so people understood what was going on with so that. So Marion gets, or the Abrams get the 178 or? No, we get the 178. We're getting the 178 from, we're. So we're, we, the town pays the Abrams 260. No, the Abrams is, or, they're getting 170. Yeah, they're getting 170 and change. Yeah. <coughs> and change. Um, we're going to get reimbursed that money from 
from the federal government at that time. So when we do the when we do the purchase for the 170, we're going to get a check back for the 170. That check actually comes in for us to do the purchase. Oh, to do the purchase. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we'll yeah. So 178, I believe, is the amount. 177 and some change is what the Abramses are getting for the buyout property. We're getting given that check to do the buyout. Right. Yeah, um, and I, then I understand that. Yeah. So that's what I was saying. There's 260 total coming from the government. Right. 178 is going to the Abrams. The rest is going to be held until we right. demolish, and then we will get a refund yeah. check from the right. government. Okay. Exactly. So. Okay. So, um, any other questions on the buyout? Or okay. So the NRCS grants. Um, the board was notified that. So with the April flooding, there were some things that weren't covered by FEMA. <coughs> um, those things that weren't covered by FEMA were the, um, the mitigation work that has to be done at the Parmenter Place site for, for the erosion into the open space that the town bought. Um, that falls under... Um, it's just short of the bridge. The erosion happened just short of the bridge at Parmenter Place. Um, so that open space is considered town infrastructure. Um, FEMA will not replace open space um, infrastructure, but what they did do is they put us in, in process for what they call mitigation grants through NRCS. <coughs> NRCS is going to pay to um, armor that bank across from um, the properties over on Parmenter Place, that abut the, the property, the river part that abuts the open space, they're going to armor, it's going to be um, three feet thick and 200 linear feet long, and there's going to be a, a armoring there to channel the flow under the bridge and away from the open space. Um, are they going to do anything with the other side of the river where it's water time, that garage is about private to fall property, in, and, and unfortunately, they don't. they don't cover anything with private property. And RCS wouldn't cover okay. because when that bridge or when that barn falls into the river, like the one, the little <coughs> shed, see the oil that will soon fall into the river, too. Who pays for the cleanup of that when that happens? So, when that happens. I mean, obviously, we will we will have to deal with it when it happens. FEMA has come out, and NRCS has come out, and AN, ANR has come out, and they have talked to the property owners. They have talked to the property owners about what they have to do. Um, you know, I don't know what the process is if they can make them armor that that stretch of of river. They can't make them do it, I don't think. They can make recommendations. Um, I know I've been told by the family they don't have the money to make the, the armoring recommendations that have been told to them. Um, you know, unfortunately, that's a mitigation that FEMA won't cover, NRCS won't cover because it's private property. Um, <coughs> the White House right at the bridge, the White House and that barn are owned by the same family. Um, and it's it's a matter of time, you're right. It yeah, is the, a matter the of barn, time. The barn is real close. So the trees just came down that are there, the barn. I know, they went and surveyed it the other day. And Jaron Borg from a &R went and surveyed it again and it, it went from five feet to four feet to whatever it is it's now. It's the same as that little shed at the CD yeah. oil <coughs> property. That mm -hmm. is about to fall. That's even closer to falling in. So, unfortunately, like I said, that's private property, and, and so far that's not. It's an issue we're going to have to deal with if it impacts the bridge, and the state will have to deal with. Um, until then, we've been told by FEMA, and right. I think you're aware I've put tons of hours into FEMA stuff. Oh, yeah, you've done a great I, job I, of that. There's, unfortunately, only so far you can <coughs> go with the FEMA stuff. and. NRCS and ANR. Um, 
you know, we're squeezing every dime we can out of them for certain things. Um, like I said, they're going to armor, they're going to armor the other side, the, the infrastructure property that the town has. Um, Can you do that? Doesn't it always affect somewhere else? <coughs> like we never wanted you to put up the wrap and everything else, and we had that problem on the other side of the bridge that when they did it originally that you couldn't put up certain stuff and you had to put in all these twigs and that's what they wanted so that it would keep it safe without making it worse for the ne next hundred feet past mm -hmm. it, you know? Right. Um, Unfortunately, Joyce, my frustration with FEMA is, <laughs> is very high because I was told essentially it's not our problem to the bridge to the barn falls in the water and wipes out the bridge right. then it's a FEMA problem and I'm like well how about we take care of it before it becomes a problem and they're like FEMA doesn't do that right. FEMA is about disaster recovery not disaster avoidance it's disaster avoidance after so the just after it is like the bridge falling in that's what we're right putting <clears throat> Um, the other place it, so between that property and then Tweed River Drive where the wash there was a washout actually just below Tundig's house um, NRCS is also going to armor 150 feet of that roadway except that's going to be 5 feet thick and it's much higher density stuff because of the pitch um, but that's going to be armored as well the town did get a grant for both of those through NRCS. Um, the the amount of money coming from the federal government is $143,000. And there's a uh, $30,000 match that the town has to do if we decide to accept the grant, which the board is going to talk about um, next meeting as well. Um, I actually got the grant paperwork this evening sent to me I haven't had a chance to look at it so um, so that's something else we're going to be doing um, <clears throat> so um, with that being said we have to discuss whether we want to do that the budget this year is is a is a whole other interesting animal the you know we had to do a lot of things with the budget that that people are going to be questioning and sort of wondering about. Um, we level funded a lot of different things um, in departments, which I just sent an email out to them saying that we level funded them because we can't look at doing certain things um, this year. And because of the fire truck and the new librarian position and things like that, the, we held the tax rate to 0.57. Um, with what we did but that's not incorporating in the schools so the schools are still coming and we don't know what the final number is with the schools and that's going to jack the taxes up so the warrant the warning for this town meeting is going to be pretty pretty um it's going to be not as substantial about asking for outlays of money because we just don't have the money to outlaw um <clears throat> you know we the town is is We've got some some things to think about and some stuff to do at town meeting. We have to talk about where our priorities are as a town and what we need to do with our budgeting because, you know, we would like to do capital planning. We would like to sort of get us on the track to doing what we have to do as a town to be better prepared. But because of the, the line of credit we took and things like that, um, which is going to carry over into next year, we we are looking at not doing as many things <laughs> as we would like to. Now are the budgets complete now? Yeah, the budgets so were com we budget. completed the budget on the sixteenth. And um, we're waiting on the on the school number. That has not come yet, but it's not it's not officially due until the end of the week. So <coughs> um, so moving on to the complaint. Um, number five. So with the complaint, um, I reached out to VLCT as um, as recommended by Mary Lou, and I talked to I talked to um, some people at VLCT. The town um, 
under its passive insurance is available to receive uh, three hours of, of human resource legal advice. Um, so um, VLCT is advising and they would they say we should avail ourselves of that <coughs> and have have a um, passive passive VLCT attorney look at what's going on and then come up with an opinion as to what the next steps forward are on that. Um, Mary Lou agrees with that, I believe. Yes. Um, so um, what I am going to do is to allow us to do that. I have to make a motion that we that we seek the, the council. Um, so I'm going to make a motion um, to bring in outside counsel as recommended by VLCT and Passive um, and allow the chair to authorize an opinion from said counsel as to what the next steps forward are. The reason we're doing this is because um, Mary Lou looking at the policy, VLCT looking at the policy um, that we have in place, the complaint doesn't fall under the under the either heading of a of a um, conflict of interest or an ethical violation. Um, it it's a it's a harassment complaint. Um, that is a is a human resources issue, um, and we feel we need to get some human resource input on that. Um, so, with that said, I'm going to make a motion that the board um, bring in outside counsel, as recommended by VLCT and Passive and Town Council, and allow the chair to authorize an opinion from said council as to the ongoing complaint. Second. Just Wait. point of order. Discussion on the motion. Before the second. Uh, discussion <coughs> on the, the motion second. before. Discussion on the motion before the vote is taken. The Roberts oh, rules of order. Once the second is given, it can you can no. Yes. Once second discussion. The, oh. It goes. The motion. Okay. The motion is seconded, second. and then it's open. To, open for discussion. So the vote has not been taken. The vote hasn't been taken. It's been. I made a motion, and the motion was seconded. Then it can be open to discussion between the board members, and then we can take a vote. And the public. No. There's no. There. There's. The. The vote is of the board right now to. To allow for the seeking of outside counsel to advise the board. It's not it's not a, a motion. It, it's a motion that should be discussed with the board. And the <coughs> townspeople. No, there's no the the board is is who's making the decision. Um, I believe that's correct. Um, does the council, town council know the rules of order? Or is there discussion the open to the public? Yes. Pardon? What is your question? Is the discussion open to the public after the motion is made? After the motion is made, I would say yes. It okay. should be open to right. the public who is present. Okay. So I will, I will um, go to town council and I will say okay my understanding was it was between the board but that's fine I'm going to limit any discussion from the public and and the board um, I'd like people to limit their comments to five minutes or less if they can and then we'll move on I would first like to say <coughs> if I'm recognized of course you are. Okay. that I have been waiting over three months to defend myself against allegations of harassment and it looks like this motion is another tactic to circumvent the protocols the board adopted last year to handle complaints against public officers for on if, if you follow the protocols any complaint that comes in on a public officer should is 
is discussed. So, Ann, what I've been advised by town council and the LCT council is that I'm being told the policy that's in place is not applicable to what is going on. Okay? We are not talking about a conflict of interest. We are not talking about an ethical conflict. Uh, so what, so this, is, this complaint was filed <coughs> October 8th. Why has it taken and this long? And you know long exactly why it's taken this long. We've tried to mediate the complaint. We've tried to go through EAP. We've tried a bunch of different things. Okay. And we and and, and we, we have, have done all forward. of that. And, and and that was just completed, from my understanding. Mary Lou reached out and. As far as I know, it hasn't been completed. Okay. No one's reported back to me <coughs> that it was completed. Okay. So, um, we've taken numerous steps, however, to. It, it hasn't been avoided. Get, get we've been resolved. trying to deal with it and get it resolved in a way that is giving everybody involved, yourself included, due process. When I'm advised by the town council and I'm advised by VLCT that the policy does not apply to the current situation, and I have to seek outside counsel as HR, Human Resource Council, that's what I'm. That's what the motion is. The motion is to, to get an opinion from Passive through our insurance as to what the next step is and how to properly address this complaint. Okay. The town has expended <coughs> almost $2,000 in consultations with the town attorney on yes, this Yes, we issue. have, and we did and that because you sought outside and counsel, and it's wrote a letter to me, and at that point in time, I had to seek town counsel. Okay? You sought, you sought her? I sought town counsel when outside counsel was, was, was brought into this, and that's what I had to do. Okay? And outside and town council at the time advised me that meetings that Trish was present at should not happen without her being present okay so that is what has happened okay the complaint process has not been avoided I have tried to do this for I tried executive session I tried mediation I tried a bunch of different things and I'm we're waiting for the results of EAP I don't know I know that Mary Lou reached out to EAP and they were going to reach out. I, I'm, you know, waiting on the results of that. But since then, at Mary Lou's behest, I contacted VLCT and they advised me under passive, which we have an insurance claim, which we have insurance. And for this. we've known about. <clears throat> But I was advised benefit. that I had We've to known make about that benefit. But Ann, unfortunately, I was advised that I had to make a motion to do that. So that's what I'm doing. I'm making a motion to take part of that outside counsel and to use it as appropriate. You know, it has. I was told by VLCT I have to make a motion for that. So that's what I'm doing. Go cool. Yes, what, Joyce. Can you tell me what is the AP? It's EAP? Invest EAP is is a employment employee assistance, assistance program. program. Employee assistance program. Yeah, sorry about that. And it's, okay. a, it's a it's a division of the employee assistance program that um, addresses conflicts, uh, you know, with communication and um, procedure, especially related to municipal um, issues. So we. You know, in researching how to address this particular complaint, um, that was one area, you know, one um, possibility, an avenue that looked like there was potential there. Um, and it took quite a while to get to the right people at EAP, invest EAP, and see what they felt was a, a possible way to get things resolved. Um, that was brought back to the board. <coughs> And, you know, some of the ideas that they had were not really, uh, the, uh, were somewhat rejected by the board. So we went back and came up with another way to try to resolve it with Invest DAP. That's also a free service. So we're trying to do this without costing additional money um, beyond what's already been expended. And, um, what I have learned, the only, I've only gotten a partial report back. There was some, um, a meeting with the town clerk 
the town clerk did report back that um, she felt it was beneficial to her, but she did not feel that there would um, a, a meeting with her and um, Anne would be productive at all. So we're kind of back at square one. Um, and we also, I mean, as people probably know, we've discussed this at town at select board meetings about how to resolve it, and haven't really been able to come to a a solution to address it properly either that everybody was comfortable with. So that's why we are trying this other free resource to see if maybe they can bring some um, some path to resolution to get. It. You know, yes, get so people on the right track again. Mary Lou, so you're saying that you're representing the select board in this complaint, but then I'm also hearing that you're representing the town clerk and advising mm -hmm. the county clerk no. in these matters. No, I'm not. What? She has not reached out to you and discussed this complaint? No. I think no. We're, we're sticking to we the motion right now. The only conversation I have had with the town clerk was to call her and, and see if she actually had a conversation with Investigate P as it was rec it was recommended two weeks ago when I was at the last meeting that um, Investigate P meet both separately with the town clerk and with Ann. And um, that's all I've heard uh, follow up as far as whether that was done or not. In her notes, she's says she's met with counsel. I'm assuming it was you. Has notes? In Trisha's letters that she wrote, she states she met with counsel. So how are you aware of a letter she wrote? Because you, this, this letter that we just got today, is that what you're referring to? Or no, not at all. The prior letter? Yeah. The one that is public record. Okay. I don't know who she's spoken to about that. I think you're incorrect. I think you're referring to the Herald article. Okay. I apologize on that, but... <coughs> Go ahead, Joyce. So isn't who you're making a motion to meet with part of the EAP? No, no. The LCT is the Vermont League of Cities and Towns. Right. They, th through passive and verb, pretty much ensure all the most, most municipalities in the state the LCT has what they call the MAX Municipal Assistance Center, which uh, select boards and, and elected, elected officials can reach out to for advice on problems. When I reached out to the LCT about this issue, <coughs> they, um, they gave it to, they have an in-house person who does human resource issues. The woman who, who, who um, who spoke to me said, are you a member of PASIF? I said, yes. We were contacted by PASIF and told that we have um, three or four hours of free, free counsel from a human resources attorney available to us through our insurance. Um, so what I'm asking for is the ability to reach out to that Human Resources Council to get advice on this, okay? Um, because VLCT, when Mary Lou looked at the policy, <coughs> I called the MAC Center. The MAC Center is, is VLCT's lawyers. They looked at the policy initially, said that it did not fall under the policy for conflict of interest and ethical standards in the way the policy was written. So with that being said, they recommend that I talk to a human resources attorney who will come up with an opinion on what the next step forward should be. They know that we've tried to mediate this. They know that we've sought Invest EAP's help. Have you really sat down as a board without the complaint involved and talk to all sides before this at a meeting? We have not had an executive session about now, the complaint. Not, not an executive, because it should be out in the open, but when there's a complaint, have the three of you sat and discussed it, or did you two decide 
that Trish was in the right and you were going to attack. We're talking about the motion right now. We're not talking about the complaint and the mechanics itself, okay? And the problem is, right now, the board has to decide what's in the best interest of the town. And what's in the best interest in the town it's is... Great. is It's no, great. Is protecting that town, yes. is protecting it's the free. town... And discussing it amongst yourselves before you bring in Mary Lou or... <clears throat> Well, since this is free, I think it's a good idea to proceed with this. I think the motion is pretty self-explanatory that we're seeking legal guidance from human resource attorneys as to what the next steps have to be. Unfortunately, we're dealing with elected officials, and there's some gray area as to what is enforceable and what's not enforceable and what, what, the, what the levels of certain things are. And that's why human resources has to sort of give their opinion as to what the next steps forward are. But isn't this like <clears throat> you've all, you made We're talking the, about the motion, you or made, we're not talking you about made the, the verdict a few weeks ago, and now this is no. The we trial. haven't made the verdict. We haven't made the verdict. If you're talking about the vote of no confidence, it was the continued behavior of the people in this situation that led me to take a vote of no confidence because this is an ongoing thing that is not ended and, uh, you know, it... And voted for her resignation. You're right. Mm -hmm. Because I feel the behavior exhibited is not that, that is, is But you never even discussed it with her. You discussed it with the town clerk. Not with no. I discussed it with the town member. attorneys. I haven't discussed it with the town clerk. Oh, no. well. right, we're talking I'm about the motion right now. Okay. Is there any more discussion about the motion from the public? Call the question. Okay. So again, I will clarify the motion one more time by reading it. The chair makes a motion to bring outside counsel into the matter recommended by VLCT and PASIF and allow the chair to authorize an opinion from said council on the complaint. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Can I ask one more question? Is there a way to put in there, like, I know we're getting three free hours, but what if this takes 12? Four. Uh, or four <coughs> hours, but if this takes 12 hours, like... We can limit it. Um, we, can, <coughs> we can limit it. Is there it. a so dollar amount or something? I can find out if there's a dollar amount, but right okay. now I'll, I'll limit it to the, to the free hours and we'll go from there. Okay, I know that... I mean, just because we're two councils then working on... No, 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 I understand, is, but I, I also feel... I also, I'm, I'm not looking to spend money, like people say, haphazardly and just out of control. You know I'm a little okay? stingy, so. Well, <laughs> but you know what? I also, ha I also have to act in behest of the town and what's going to pr protect, protect the, the town. town. No, and agree. when outside counsel is brought in the day or two after the complaint was made, and, and I get a letter from that outside counsel, I have to seek town counsel. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not an HR professional. So guess what? I sought town council's advice, and town council said so, can from I that just, time can forward. Can I just clarify something that you just said? You said you got a letter from an outside counsel? Is that what said. you're saying? You, you, I got an email or something from outside I counsel. wrote you a letter saying I had gotten advice. I did not say that I had hired <clears throat> It, it was. Lawyer. It had outside counsel on the bottom of the letter. I had. All right. Listen. I, it's seeking advice from outside counsel is getting outside counsel. Okay. And when I presented that to did the you ask attorney, your board about seeking <clears throat> outside counsel, which you're supposed to do, or did you just pick up the phone and call counsel? The board chair is allowed to call town council. Her. So why don't you become familiar with the board rules? Okay. You too. Yeah, the board chair can call town council. That was clarified at the beginning of the this, the this sitting board session. And if the board contacts council, if other board members contact council, they come to the board. They come to the board and say why they're contacting council.
So there. With that being said, the vote was in favor of seeking outside counsel. I will, at the, at the suggestion of Joyce, limit it to the three free hours, and then we'll come back if that looks like it's going to go over that and what the cost may be what for that. Is right. So no, no, no. <laughs> I, I fully agree. So the, the decision to not go forward with the ETA, whatever that group was, was because Trish said she. There was no she, decision. But she, but Trish, you not to go forward. Was, Trish, uh, we're said not discussing the complaint in right now. We made a motion. The motion is to get an opinion from HR. That's what we're doing. Okay. We're but, what, but was that other group doing? There, there is no discussion now. We're done with that. We're going to move on to the last item on the agenda. Last two items on the agenda tonight, and then we'll close the meeting. <clears throat> All right. So. On to new business. Um, we have to sign for the Harvey's excavating outside contractor. They have to be approved for the upcoming year. And they have an independent contracting document checklist. <coughs> and then sign for them to be used as a subcontractor by the town. And we do this for most of the contractors. We want to look, over, look it over you can. Didn't Harvey's already have? It expired. Yeah, so it expired, so it has to be. Yeah. It expired, so they're up for renewal. When does it expire? How long is it? Three years. Well, I'm not sure if it's good for one or three, three years. years. Three years. Three years, yeah. And we get a new certificate of insurance every year. Do we have to sign this? Yeah. That's, yeah. That's oh, I have two places yeah. in the back. No, I was just letting Ann look at it first, and then you can look at it if you want. And then I make a motion that we approve and sign for the certificate of insurance. Second. Second. Okay. I will sign it. <coughs> and then hand it out if I can find it. Okay. All right, so the last order of new business is um, we received yet another petition from town members. This one. Um, Undecided voters of Pittsfield request a select board include the following article in the warning for the town for the 2020 town meeting. Um, all it says is prohibit the sales and dispensing of recreational marijuana or marijuana products, including but not limited to solvents, edibles within the town. Um, two things I got back on this were um, they need five percent. Um, 5% of the voters of the town to sign a petition. They have 12 votes and 5% is 20. Um, someone signed it who wasn't even a resident of the town, but uh, two, people. two people who did. Um, and then um, VLCT advised that the language isn't acceptable either. So if they wanted this on the, on the thing, we could put it forward if they had enough voters. Um, but the language would have to be changed. But since there aren't enough voters on the petition, we can't act on this. We can do it as a non-binding question again, like I was, like I advised um, Mrs. Jarecki. We can add it. We can have a discussion about it at the end of the meeting as a non-binding issue. But that's as far as we can go with it as as this petition stands. So, um, how how close? Can you to have it on? So 45 days, so there still is time to get to get um, the signatures. There's still time to get signatures, I think. We are I 47 days that. away, so I think. I thought last Friday was the deadline. I don't know why I think that, but somehow. Uh, I thought we were 47 days away, but it's 45 days away. Um,
five. I think I missed it. February 1st to the 2nd is 30 days. Right. So it's 29 days, that's 31. Right. Yeah. And, yeah, and, and then we have 6 days. Out, yeah. So. Right. Right. <laughs> yep, so we're out. Okay. All right. But we can bring it up as a non-binding. We can, we can certainly have a non-binding non discussion. I don't know where it originated from, but we can bring it up if we want as a non-binding issue to that. I know that uh, that Jesse brought it in, but I don't know where it came from. So. <laughs> came from Jesse, you're not. The round table. Not. <laughs> came from the round table in the back, Jesse's initiation. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's initiation. Um, I do have a question. Um, yeah. And this is just from reading in the newspaper. Um, the town clerk, you said, has up to $5,000 she can spend up to five thousand dollars without permission. So, in the purchasing policy, purchases are allowed to be made up to five thousand dollars without your approval before no, they need. It's forbidding purposes before it can go to bid. So, anything over five thousand dollars needs to we need to get bids on. Right. So, so what I'm saying is under five thousand dollars, Charles had said in the paper that you said she can spend in up the to budget. Anything. In the budget, okay, she had five thousand dollars in the computer budget. The question was brought to me about the computer, and so the town doesn't have a, a purchasing policy per se limiting what George or the town clerk can spend on items when they do things like George can get repairs to the trucks or whatever needs to be done. Trish can do things. The the complaint that was brought before us was that she was spending money she wasn't authorized to spend. Okay? No, which I totally get. I get what the complaint is, but from what I understood in the paper, it sounded like no. Just because it's in no, the no, budget, no, 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 I can no, go no. spend four no, grand because I'm the town. I work at the town garage. That's because, and, no, I think and you that's, don't need no, approval. That's, that's because what's written in papers and what's not written in papers. You can write volumes about what's not written in papers. Right. It was the the five thousand dollars that I was talking about was the five thousand dollars in the comp in the budget line item for a computer. Okay, she came. She spent. Let's say sixteen hundred dollars on a computer. Okay, she notifies us of that. She doesn't necessarily have to seek our approval to buy a computer. If if the office computer is, we knew the computer had to be replaced. We had been told the year before the computer had to be replaced. During the FEMA work, the computer stopped working and wasn't able to keep up with the amount of stuff that was getting generated through it. It slowed down. She bought a computer. The question that was brought up was by one of the select board members to her was did she have to, she didn't have to get authorized to make that purchase. You know, she didn't have to come and ask us to make that purchase. The town office has to work. There's money in the line item for her to go and purchase a computer if necessary. It's. You know, we don't have a specific number or policy in place that limits the amount of money that, like, Patty um, would spend money for yearly contracts or things like that, and she'd come and tell us what she was spending. She didn't ask us permission to do it. She came and reported. Trish came and reported that she spent the money on the computer. There was nothing... From the budget. It was in the budget. It was in the budget. There was... We still have to sign off on all of those purchases. Like, right. so still what, do the, the. What if you decided you didn't think you wanted to do it and it was already spent? Like, I'm just. Um, right. I, the, I'm asking, like, you know, for not that. The yes, select board the member who, who brought the. Who brought, I'm going to buy a computer. The, the, in the computer was month. signed off on when it was asked to be signed off on. There's a process. If there was, if there was a question of that spending, 
the select board member could have brought it to our attention and said I wanted to talk about it at a meeting. That didn't happen. It got signed off on the purchase was made. And the question was written on the order. Didn't we have to, it was a, it was a question of don't we need to discuss this at select board meeting? No, we don't have to discuss it at select board meeting. It wasn't meeting. part of you the can, capital budget, the IT it, capital, it, it wasn't it, part And of, we were told a year ago. I, I was just asking not to get into this whole subject. I was just trying so to see the, if, the if process it's up to $5,000. So, so it, 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 it was the general it was confusing the way that it was in the article. Yes, yeah, so there that, was confusion there. The because general I'm like, process I would be. So the general process would be. Choice. The general process would be, is when the orders are done, if there's something questionable. An order is a request. Order is a request for approval. Okay. When the order is done, if the select board member has a question about that item. They come to the select board and they ask to discuss it at the select board meeting. Okay, that order was signed off on and the purchase was made at the time. It was already made, already ordered. There's a process, though. So if if Matt has a process. question with the orders, he would he would make a motion or ask to have it put on the agenda at the select board and it would be brought up and That's discussed. That's the first I'm hearing. Of it. That is the, that's the first that I'm hearing about that process. That is the very first I'm hearing. Very if you first. you question an order, what would you do? I would ask the person who put the request in for the order. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if, and if they didn't answer you in a way that um, made you sign off on the order, then I'm sure you'd bring it to the select board if, if that were a question. I know that that was the process, then I guess the two questions that I asked the town clerk about. We're not discussing the complaint, and in, 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 I think Joyce had a question about what would happen normally if something were questioned. Right, like I, you know, right. George has in the budget that he, need, you know, so, he needs a new grader, and we are putting it in the budget every year, but that doesn't mean like George is going to go out and spend no, 40 grand this week right. with, no, by, without your approval. But that, <laughs> but in, the, in the purchasing policy, that has to go up to bid. That's after, after you hit 5000 10000 5000 and over $10,000, the processes have to be out to bid. There's different bid requirements for the amounts. Like FEMA has different requirements for over, for um, Culvert 33, the end of Upper Michigan Road. That bid is going to be well over $126,000 is what they consider a large job. So that bid has very specific guidelines. So when George puts that out to bid in the spring, there are very specific guidelines that have to be met with that bid. Um, and when purchases go over $5,000 for the town, then there is a bid process. The, question I was asked by the reporter when I was asked about by the reporter was about I believe it was about the five thousand dollars in the budget for the computer I to be honest the conversation with the reporter I think he's in the back <laughs> um, you know I think everybody's questions were answered appropriately but maybe they weren't I, I understand what you're asking. I mm -hmm. think my intention was that you were asking, you were talking about a specific item in and the you line. Item. Very specifically general about anything and everything. Right. right. I thought it was general too. Is right. there an amount that the town clerk can spend on her own without any anything? I, I'm naming her flowers. I mean, can she just go buy flowers? for her desk or so she can spend up to five thousand dollars it to depends the i mean well that, so whatever we set the budget i don't even remember, like right for uh i don't know maintenance like i can't remember what it was exactly or what what budget it came out of but like town hall we do a five thousand dollar budget for for maintenance and and for we still see on, everything right. that gets well, I, just, I don't <laughs> We see the things that come through, like the the T-shirts for the clerk came, T-shirts for the 
constables came through the clerk's office, but but she purchased those for the constables because they came to her and to the board with a specific complaint at one point in time. Um, General question. I'm not trying to pick it up. on back to that computer. What I don't know computers, so this is just shouldn't have there been a discussion. And I'm not sure. And I'm not trying to pick on Trish on this laptop versus a desktop. That security and everything. If you're talking about security or anything with that, I, well, we went based on the recommendation right, of, of our, of our of the IT. Person. Yeah. Okay, that's all I was asking on that. Yeah. I was just curious. <clears throat> I mean, I'm not a computer either. person either. Neither am I, so I, I didn't you know, know, and that's why I was asking. I know that we had a discussion about the building security and the IT person. This is before the computer purchase was made. We went on. We went to the the town offices and the library being separate entities. Um, they weren't for a while. Um, they're separate entities now. We. We go by Becky's recommendations for security. Becky comes to us and says, you have an opening here. Um, this year, one of the big things is um, having susceptibility to fishing and spear fishing and all that type of stuff. Um, having backups in place. The board got a recommendation from Becky to, to do backups every day to a, to a secure cloud that a lot of banks use and stuff like that. Um, so we did that. It's ten dollars a month. We things like that that we enter into contracts with the board discusses. You know, but in that particular case, that was installed prior to any discussion by the board. In that particular case, it was, it was installed yes. prior. It was. It was. She so it was felt not brought before the board. It was discussed, and we agreed to cease its its operation if we didn't want it done. Becky was programming a bunch of stuff and, and put us in it and asked us to do that as a, a, as a further security measure. Um, we all agreed to do it and then bring it up at the next meeting and we discussed it at the next meeting. Um, are we going to start digitizing any of our files upstairs? Uh, I know that the listers have some stuff going on with mapping and stuff like that. I don't know if you're that's about what you're talking you're about. about the land records and stuff because I know every time somebody comes in to do something, the percentage of that money has to go I towards know, digitizing I, um, that. I know that have you looked into it? There is a significant expense to that. Um, we have some numbers that Patty brought forward at some point in time about that, but. Right. So periodically, everything gets archived and goes to the state archives. Right, but I need mean um, to go online. Like if I wanted to go online for Killington and right. see your town, your land record, right. I can do that and I can pay and get all those right. records. Um, and a portion of when you come in and a, an attorney comes in and files something and they pay their fee, a portion of that goes to digitizing. It goes which to the to the forget the name of the fund, but it's a it's a record record preservation fund. Um, so I, I don't think it's necessarily for digitizing, but I don't know the answer to that. I just thought if we could get librarian numbers and how many people are upstairs, maybe we could have the librarian start scanning some of our records. Just get our money. Back to that as, it would, as be, a, it would it would be great to have it for sure. I mean, it's a small town and. It's big expense for a small town. As a lister, we are doing the mapping. We've already got, we've gone to contract with Nimrick to map the whole town so we can get that done. Um, we are in the process of hiring and or interviewing for appraisals because we need a whole town reappraisal. Didn't we just have that done? In 09. Make a motion to who would want to see it. Bruce. Oh. Bruce, did you have anything you wanted to talk about specifically, or no, you no, just I'm observing? Entertainment value. Entertainment. <laughs> All right. Better than TV, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, are there any other questions from the public? 
regarding anything that happened regarding the last two items that we did in the Sorry, no. Okay. And did you get your question answered about digitizing anything, Sarah? Talked to you about that. Yeah, a little bit. you know what? I, I know there's. I know, I know there's steps, some numbers. It was looked into. I think. Prior. Do we even have a scanner here? No. Yes, we do. Small. I was just saying. Our copiers scanner. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I know Patty looked into. The cost. The cost is significant to digitize the, the records, and it's got to do with the map size and the, the, the mapping process. Will all be digitized? They are going to take and have looked at the maps, and we're going to forward them. No, no, no. I the, meant all the archive. The records. archive maps yeah. will all be put into these new maps, so we have accurate, as accurate as we can layout, because there aren't really that many surveys of parcels okay. of land around here, but. Everything we have in our files will be digitized on maps by NIMRC. Okay. I could just add that I do know that um, when the state increased the recording fee from $10 a page to $15 a page, part of the, the basis for the increase and part of the revenue from that increase is supposed to go to digitizing files um, in the land records throughout the state. But um, as far as how that money is, you know, brought in, I think it's being brought in, centralized, and then divvied back out to the various towns that still haven't had the resources to, to bring it up to, um, you know, to, to get that rolling. Because there's only about two dozen or so uh, towns in the state that have indexed. When we say we're going to reappraise them, hire a firm, all that money we already have in our till um, from the state to pay for the reappraisal. So it won't be coming out of Sarah, you said it was 58000 last week, I think is what you said. So it was 58000 we have right now in the list of coffers to pay for the mapping and maybe not all the mapping, but all of the reappraisal. And if I can have a minute of your time when we're done. <laughs> Charlie, I just wanted to say that entertainment is fine, but it's a curiosity that brings me down here to, okay. after reading in the papers and stuff, it's like, oh, let's see what's going on. Okay. If I could have a minute of your time when we're done tonight, too, if you have a second <laughs> during the meeting, I <laughs> to talk to you about something. So, um, that said, I make a motion to adjourn. Second. I. Okay.